The number of medals the United States took home in the recent Winter Games were far fewer than expected, but one of the teams that came out on top was women's U.S. hockey, and that makes Casey Bellamy of Westfield an Olympic gold medalist. Ron Shemelis of the Republican and Mass Live spoke with me about Bellamy's connection to this region, how women's hockey has evolved in recent years, and what was different this time between longtime rivals Canada and the United States. They are so evenly matched that Olympic watchers say this is the best rivalry of any sport in the Winter Games for sure because there's obviously familiarity, there's fierce competitiveness, they're both fighting for the same prize. This time the U.S. came out on top, but if they played 20 times and it was 10 to 10, it wouldn't surprise anybody. So Casey Bellamy, obviously one of the women on this team, she's from Westfield, so she's a familiar face and name to folks who are watching the show. You watched her skate in this area when there wasn't a woman's team or an, even a youth female team. She was playing with boys. Right. Was she a standout even then? You could tell that she was a special player uh, to stand out in that type of competition uh, and, and to look for the best competition possible. There was something very unusual about her. She grew up at a time that was, was good for a young woman's player to develop. Uh, and, and she took advantage of because it. Because she had um, to really st really train hard to stand out among male players, or what do you think that was? Well, I, I think any time women are in a predominantly male sport, that there's a tremendous amount of motivation for them to show that they can play. There are challenges. Uh, there's more open-mindedness toward that than there used to be, but not everybody buys in on that. So you have to be better than good to stand out, and, and she did, and she, she won respect from men, but also she, she found her niche in the women's game, and I think it's important to look at it and say, this is now women's hockey. She's not trying to play a man's sport. Now, you interviewed her before. She was on the Olympic team. Um, what, what do you remember about that interaction? What stood out to you? Well, what I remember is that she loved playing defense, and, and a lot of the top players either want to be goalies. In high school hockey locally, the earliest girls players who played in the boys' leagues were usually goalies for some reason, or they wanted to be scorers uh, because they they that's where you get your name in the, the paper. Is, that's yeah. sort of, but she loved playing defense, and, and she really took to that type of the game, and, and that's what she's become. Now, for women in this sport, it was added to the Olympics in 1998, which was incidentally the last time that the U.S. team actually won a gold medal. Why, let's give some history here, why was the sport added in 98? Well, the Olympic Committee looks at how many participating nations uh, can put good teams out there. That's, that's part of it. I do think they like to encourage growth sports, and in the last, in the 21st century, they've tried to modernize the Olympics to something beyond what the games used to be. All of these worked in favor of women's hockey uh, because it was a now a legitimate sport. It wasn't a novelty sport in a lot of these countries. And even though the U.S. and Canada are the dominant teams, they are one and two in some order. Right now, the U.S. is on top. Other countries are also getting better at it. And I think what you'll see is teams like Finland, the Russians, the Japanese play. Uh, they're going to close the gap, and the Olympics want to be part of that. For this women's team, you explained to me, they almost boycotted in recent years. Why was it? Well, last year was a world tournament, and uh, their protest was the disparity between conditions and pay for the men and the women. And on the surface, people said, well, that's unpatriotic. They were going to skip a tournament, and, and they were serious about doing it. But people within the sport said they had a legitimate gripe. They were not looking, as I understand it, for equal everything. They just wanted to close the gap because these women and all Olympic athletes have to put their lives on hold to train and play. This is not a part-time job. Whether it was in the chariots of fire days, I don't know. But today, you've got to do nothing else if you're going to be serious about being competitive. And they couldn't afford to do that. So they did come to an understanding and an agreement with USA Hockey, the governing body. And fortunately, that was, uh, that was handled. This is certainly not the first time that we've heard about this fairness issue for women trying to make inroads in what had been a male-dominated sport. We heard about it in basketball. And yet, this still persists. Why do you think there is this push and pull around this issue? Well, I, I don't think it's just sexism, although I do think that plays into it. I, you know, money is scarce. Uh, the, these teams cost a lot of money. What the American team had as an advantage was they represent the country wonderfully, the American women's hockey team. And that was the case even before they won the gold medal. So they had a selling point, said, we're representing the country. We want to do it the best we can. We can't afford to do it. This just isn't fair. Uh, and and they, in my opinion, they were right. I, I think we're going to hear it again in other sports. I think there's more awareness of the need to support all of our athletes. Uh, I know I grew up in the era where you were supposedly an amateur or you couldn't play. Well, that's very impractical to do. If you can do nothing else as a male or female athlete except train for the Olympics, 
these women wanted to play at top level, and they had to find a way to be supported that way. Do you think now that the women have won this gold medal, you know, to sort of redeem the team, a lot of the women who were interviewed after the fact, like Casey Bellamy and others, they felt like this was a redemption for them. Is that going to help at the lower levels for kids who want to get into There's the sport? There's no question about it. I think we saw, we saw that with the U.S. women's soccer team uh, that, that made a big splash on the world stage. The women's basketball team, when Rebecca Lobo from Southwick played on the Olympic team, uh, these types of events tell people that it can be done. And around the country, there'll be countless numbers of girls and young women who will think about playing hockey. Now, they're not all going to wind up being at the top level, but you'll have a larger talent pool, you'll have more participation, and you'll have more acceptance. So, but we hear a lot about concussions. If you're a parent who's considering whether or not to put their kid on the ice, boy or girl, what should they be looking at? Uh, I do think the equipment is better. I think there's more awareness. I think there's more... Uh, response when there is a concussion case and was once the case you don't just send people back out there it is a concern but I don't think it's something that that nullifies participation in the sport